do, do, do. You guys so excited? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna spotlight myself for everyone. Nah, nah, nah. All right, we got some people from Kentucky. Ashley's from Kentucky, Florida, Texas. Nice. Uh, fun fact about me, I used to leave, live in Colleen, Texas. Um, I came to New York with a cute little accent, and then I was here for too long. So I don't have it anymore. But I used to live in Colleen. Um, before that, I was born in Germany. Can anyone guess Frankfurt, Germany? I was born in Frankfurt, Germany. Then I went to Colleen, Texas. And then I spent most of a lot of my childhood in a uh, lot in Oklahoma. Um, anyone guess what my dad did for a living? Any, any guesses on that? Air Force? No, you're close, close, very close. He's a drill sergeant, U.S. Army drill sergeant. Yes, yes. Thank you for your service, father. Spent 20, 20 years in the U.S. Army. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I turned out okay, considering. <laughs> Alrighty, well, let's jump into it. Jump right on into it. How's everybody doing? Um, oh gosh, yeah. Yes, oh, you're in AZ. I was just in Arizona. I was just there. We were just talking about that. All right, you know, <laughs> like, I know, I know, <laughs> I was there too. <laughs> All right, let's see, make sure y'all are muted. Okay, Um, I have a couple notes for today. I'm so excited to talk with y'all. We're going to talk about scaling. Um, We're going to talk about what it looks like to scale. I might call on a few people. I want everyone to participate as much as possible uh, in this um, training. Participate as much as possible as you can. That would be helpful to me. Uh, the more energy you guys give me, the more I'm going to give you. That's just how I roll on these trainings. I love when you guys participate. It makes it way more fun. Um, it makes it way more fun for me. It's going to make it way more fun for you as well. Uh, you know what, Tiffany, can I do, can I make you a co-host so you can, um, let people in the room for me? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. And if I drop any links, um, Tiffany's going to do me a favor. She's going to drop those over to, uh, to our live stream as well. So we don't forget about you guys who are tuning in on the live stream. Um, and in fact, Anyone who wants to actually jump into the Zoom room, what I will do is I'll copy the invite link here. And um, Tiffany, if you want to grab that, you can have them jump on in into the Zoom room. So you guys can jump in the Zoom room. If you're on the live and Facebook, that's fine. I love you guys to be in the Zoom room, though. Um, I just think it's a little more cozy. You guys can connect and hang out with me. Uh, that's nice. It's nice. It feels good. It feels great. You guys love me today? All right. Um, let's jump into it. All right. So here we are. Uh, here's the deal. When it comes to scaling, guys, let's just, let's talk about this. I'm going to get comfortable for a second, back myself up, cross my legs, fold my legs. I'm going to just riff today. Hope that's okay with you guys. I think the problem here is uh, most people they talk about scaling businesses. And you guys know this. People talk about scaling business. They're like, do you want to scale your business? Do you want to scale your business? And they they have this emphasis on, on scaling, but they don't actually know what the hell it is. And I know they don't um, because I used to be one of those people. Yeah, I'm going to call myself out. I used to be one of those people who used to talk about scaling, but I had no idea what scaling a company actually was. People talk about scaling a company from the standpoint of just adding on more and more clients, adding on more and more people to your roster, right? More adding on more clients, customers to your roster, and just growth, growth, growth. And that's just one element. That's just marketing, right? And can you guys, do you guys see this? You see this happening, right? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you see this happening. 
if you guys can relate to this, where you see this happening, people talk about scaling all the time. They throw this word around like it's just like, here, scaling, scaling. I'll help you scale your company. But really, all they're saying is, uh, here's how to get more clients. And that's not what scaling is, right? And so I want to break down what scaling really is today. That's one thing that we're going to do. Um, and I'm going to show you what that looks like specifically for financial professionals, right? That's that's what we're going to talk about. Um, but here's here's what I do know. And this is something that I wanted to touch on. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm a little far away from my mic. My mic's right here. You guys can hear me okay? As I'm riffing on this stuff. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right. So here's what I do know. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, whether it's scaling, whether you're growing your business, what I know for a fact about all of us, all of us, me included, right, is that you just want to know that you're going to be okay, right? And that's one of the reasons you got into business for yourself is you wanted to know, am I going to be okay, right? Am I right? You just want to know you're going to be okay. You wanted financial security and financial freedom. You wanted to know, am I going to be okay? Always, forever, forever and ever, am I going to be okay? No matter what. No matter what, if the economy is bad, if the economy is good, if if shit goes bad, if I have bad health, if whatever it is, Will I have the ability to take care of me? Will I have the ability to take care of my family? Am I right on that? You just want to make sure you're always going to be okay. And for many of us that are entrepreneurs, that stems from something deeper. It has a deeper meaning. And if you look backwards, you can typically connect the dots to this, right? There's typically a time you can remember where you felt financially insecure, where things were fucking unraveling for you. Maybe there's many dots that you can connect to this, where you felt as though you didn't have stability, right? Maybe it stems back from when you were a child. Maybe it was in your teens. Maybe it was in your early 20s. Can anyone relate to this? And this is a safe space, so don't be afraid to be vulnerable. I'm going to be a little vulnerable and tell you guys about me. So, when I was around probably seven years old, I specifically remember a time where I was sleeping on an air mattress behind a couch at a friend's house that we were staying at because we were homeless. And I remember overhearing my mom talking about potentially also losing our car that bill collectors were calling. And I don't know what was going on at this time in my mom's life, but I remember this moment so vividly that I know that that is the the highlight, that is the moment that my financial insecurity began. That is the moment where I knew that all I ever wanted was to know that I would be okay, no matter what. What's interesting is I really just learned this about myself this past week. That's why I'm bringing it up. So I did some deep dives into myself, right? So what I think is even better about having this discussion with you is that most of us 
have some sort of money trigger, have some sort of money anxiety, have our money flaws, have our money issues. Yet, the irony is that all of us dedicated our entire careers, went to college for, in most cases, money. We went to school for accounting, finance. We dedicated our careers to it. We took accounts payable jobs. We took CFO jobs. We have literally spent our entire lives trying to figure out and understand money at the deepest possible level. Financial security. We've been seeking it forever and ever and ever. And we likely chose the career of accounting. Why? Why did we choose it? Why did we pick it? And even those of you who maybe don't have a traditional uh, trajectory of accounting, maybe you went into accounting or bookkeeping in a non-traditional way because you thought this will be my way to make more money. Maybe you decided to pick up bookkeeping because you thought this will be my way to make money, right? Because it felt secure. Well, everyone needs an accountant. Well, everyone needs a bookkeeper. There will always be security for me. We seek control. Isn't this crazy to understand this? So taking this to the next level, the more ironic part of this, as much as we have spent our entire lives looking for financial security, looking to understand the way that money flows in and out, assets, liabilities, equity, we have focused our time and attention and energy on this because we want this control. We want to know forever and ever, will I always be okay no matter what? The only time we have really ever watched money is in other people's bank accounts, is when it flows in and out of someone else's space, in someone else's QuickBooks account, yet not our own. And we're still here stricken with money anxiety and not just our own money anxiety. No, the anxiety of someone else's finances. Will they also be okay? What if they can't afford their bills now? Are you guys relating to this? Does this sound familiar? Because holy fuck, it sounds familiar to me. <laughs> I have lived this my entire life. And granted, I'll be 34 this month. In approximately 10 days, I will be 34. And I, yes, I've only been on this planet a short amount of time. My entire career, I started in accounting at the age of 17. This has been my entire life. My entire life. I have been doing this. Accounts payable. I have had anxiety about, oh my God. What if we can't pay all of our bills? And now I go home. What if I can't pay all of my bills? And granted, my level of anxiety around my own finances are better. And no, I don't get to dive deep into other people's accounting anymore because now I get to teach marketing. But I get to unwrap this for you. I get to show you these fears. Right? I get to help you take them out, place them in front of you to say, this is what you are dealing with right now. And the reality is, yes, we're playing with this anxiety. We're playing in this fire of constant stress of not truly understanding money, yet we seek to understand it, and we have never truly understood it, even though we, we've we coined ourselves the people that understand it most, we've never truly understood it. Why? Because we haven't figured out how to make it. We haven't figured out how to create it. 
right? And how ironic is that? Because that's the most important part of money. It's not about it flowing out of the account and assets and liabilities and equity. It's how to create more and put more of it in your bank account. And wouldn't you agree if you understood more of these strategies, you would also be able to then help your clients, right? And so often I think, I think accountants and financial professionals write themselves off as someone who would actually be able to help their clients increase their revenues, increase their profits with actual increasing of revenue, increasing of profits. They say, oh, no, 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 I can't help with that. That's not my job. That's not my area of expertise. Well, what if you could? Wouldn't that be a game changer, right? Every time you learn how to do this, every time you increase your abilities, you're going to be able to help more people, help yourself, you rid yourself of this anxiety and moving backwards, reconnecting the dots backwards. What do you think your ideal client wants more than anything else? If you think about your ideal client, we think about everything we just talked about. What do you think they want more than anything else? Because it's not a reconciled bank account, friends. At our core, all we want to know is, am I going to be okay no matter what? Am I going to be okay no matter what? They also seek financial freedom and financial security. The, the big irony here, right? They want the same thing as you. That is likely why they went into business for themselves, right? So this is something you can relate on. This is great, right? Because you can relate to them at this deeper level, this emotional level. I need to move my camera where you guys are so I can actually talk to you. Here we go. They want security. They want financial freedom, just like you. Is this good so far? Is this helping you guys see some things in a different way? I know we haven't gotten into scaling yet, but I thought this was so important to highlight. You guys know I like to just riff on shit. So. So what, how does all this relate to scaling, right? How does this all relate to actually scaling your business? How do you actually create financial freedom and security as you scale your company? Well, I have a model. Right? Of course, I'm a model. First thing that you're going to need is an S to scale. Your S is going to be systems. Right? Systems. Proven, repeatable systems. You guys know this. And I'm not just talking about systems that are the systems uh, like, you know, how to use QuickBooks. I'm talking about your marketing systems. I'm talking about your sales systems. I'm talking about the KPIs and metrics to make sure that everyone on your team knows exactly what to do to continue to grow your company. Because your team is only as powerful as 
these processes and procedures, right? You have got to have processes and procedures. You have to have these systems in place, right? Does everyone understand that? So I think a lot of times uh, as we grow our business, we think that we also need to be the person who creates them, right? And I want to knock this idea completely away. You do not need to create your own systems. My team helps me create the systems. My team takes radical responsibility for systems and processes and procedures. They put them in place for me, right? Specifically, Brianna, she is our uh, policy and procedure queen. Anytime we need any kind of policy and procedure put in place, she's the one who creates it, right? She's the one who says, yep, that's exactly what it's going to be, right? We create videos. I don't have to create it. And so don't put this on yourself to do all of these things and think, I need to have these. But as you are scaling your company, I want you to think about my team will only be as good as the systems that I create. And so what does this mean? In the very beginning of your company, you might be thinking, well, I can just work with anybody. I'll just bring on anybody. But do you have a system for working with people? This specifically with niching, right? As you bring on a niche, this is why you can't just work with anyone, right? Because then you're not going to understand the KPIs. You're not going to understand the metrics. You're not going to understand this, the, the specifics of each client. Think, for example, I worked with a restaurant and I worked with a uh, coffee shop. The restaurant used toast. The coffee shop used square. It's very hard to put policy and procedure in place when I'm using all kinds of different pieces of technology, right? But if I would have just narrowed down and said, okay, I only work with restaurants and we integrate with toast, then I could have niched to that. Now I hated restaurants and I hated uh, coffee shops. So I actually got rid of both of those clients and I went a completely different route. <laughs> but my point is, this is why niching becomes so important, right? So, and your team can only be as good as those proven and repeatable systems. We need a C. Client acquisition. The next part of scaling is client acquisition. Do you understand client acquisition? And I don't mean just bringing on a client here and there. I mean consistent client acquisition. If I were to go ask you today to go get a new client, do you know exactly what to do? Do you know how to market your company? Do you know how to get a new client right now today? right? And this is the type of thing that your company will need to scale. And then the next level of this is, can you do that outside of you? Can you ask your team to acquire a new client for your company? Do they understand how to do that? Right? We have, we're, we're developing this new uh, this new part of client acquisition, um, I'm going to reveal it here called the mafia marketing. Uh, and this whole idea of mafia marketing, number one, it comes from being part of the Bills Mafia, because you know I am, right? Um, but this whole idea of mafia marketing is the fact that everyone knows that the mafia exists, right? But it's like this covert operation, right? And so this is what we teach. We teach a strategy that's like, it's covert, it's underground, but everyone knows it's there. 
And then it's almost like the mafia is so mass. It's there's it's a massive movement and everyone's dedicated to the same thing, right? It's like they're assassins. They're just, they're everywhere. They're all dedicated the same exact thing. We're all wondering, but how, right? We don't even know who these people are. How are they getting us to do this thing, right? So I'll reveal that all a different day, but that's what client acquisition needs to look like, right? It's how you become the category king or queen. It's having a client acquisition strategy that's so good that gets people to take action in such a way that they don't even understand how you got them to take action. They're like, I'm sorry, what? Like, I, I wasn't even... I wasn't even going to do this until next year, but your shit is so good that I want in. I want in, right? Abby says, you did that to me. It's exactly it, right? That's mafia marketing. It's like, I'm I'm sorry, how? How am I here? Like, I don't even, I don't even need this shit. Like, I don't even need this. I don't even, what? But you're so good right? I want to learn more. I'm intrigued. I need this. And I didn't even know that I needed it, but now I'm here and I love it and I want it, right? That's mafia marketing. So that's what client acquisition is. Okay. All right. So that leads me to my A. Action. Companies that are scaling are taking aligned, inspired, action with intensity and speed. I want you to think of Apple. I want you to think of Google. They are never in a place where they're like, yeah, this, this should be good for now. This should be good for the next few years. They're never like, yeah, this is okay. Yeah, no, this iPhone should be good for the next at least six years. Yeah. Jeff Bezos is never like, my mom's vacuuming. Uh, Jeff Bezos is never like, yeah, no, I think Amazon uh, should sell books for at least 30 years. That's it. We'll just sell books, right? So what actually happens, right? It's intense. They move with speed. They are not okay with anything happening slow. <laughs> we live in a technologically technological world where everything is happening with speed and intensity. Every, co every company is a content company. Everyone is producing content. I know. <laughs> And now, and now I just bought the, I had to buy a new phone so I could get the square case. <laughs> I was like, I need, I need to be able to get the square case. So are you aligned with the core values of your company? Are you taking intense action, inspired action? consistently because this is what scaling companies are doing they're not like i'll wait three or four months they're not like oh well we'll just chill on this and be okay with it and also by the way action isn't just about you they're also inspiring what i just said they're inspiring their clients to take action massive action with intensity and speed because their shit is so good, right? Did I type out my A? Did I give you A, action? L, it's for leadership. I don't think it should be any surprise to you that your ship will only be as good as your captain. 
I have seen many companies steer right into icebergs when the captain that is at the helm is a dumpster fire. It doesn't matter if the product is excellent. It doesn't matter if the idea is impeccable. It doesn't matter what the scenario is. If the leadership is trash, that company will go to trash over and over and over again. It is your job. It is your job over and over and over again to elevate your leadership skills. And just when you thought you were becoming a great leader, I want you to set the bar higher because it ain't good enough. In fact, dare I say the most important skill you will ever acquire as the CEO of your company will be your skills to lead. Lead your team, lead your company, lead your clients, lead your family. It will not be your skills to be a good accountant. It will not be your marketing skills. It will not be your sales skills. All of those jobs can be hired. Every single one of them. The most important skills you will ever have to scale your company will be leadership skills. I promise you this. Whenever you are feeling as though you have hired people and they are not doing what you want, it is not because of them. It's because you suck as a leader. Whenever you bring people into your team and it's not going the way you want, it's not because of them. It's because you are a bad leader. Take radical responsibility and realize I'm shitting. I am a shitty leader. I'm not shitting. I am a shitty leader. Radical responsibility. Finally, E. This will be your favorite. Economics. As you scale your company, it will become increasingly important that you focus on economics. And I don't just mean the economics of our world, our market. I'm talking about competing on economics, realizing that your clients need to choose between you and something else. That's one way of looking at economics. They have a choice to make. It's you or something else, right? They need to choose to work with you or choose nothing, stay where they are. They need to choose you or your competitor. That's one way to think about economics. The next way to think about economics is from your economics, your personal financial economics, right? your profitability, your revenue streams, the economics and financial health of your company. I find it ironic that so often I find financial professionals, they leave their books last. They don't take care of themselves financial, financially. Don't get me wrong, I've been there, done that. Guess what I did? Hired someone. Now it might be easy for you to say, I can do it myself. Why would I hire someone to do my accounting? Because you're the CEO. Duh. You should not be doing your own accounting as a CEO. You should be CEOing. Remember that stuff on leadership we just talked about. You should be leading your company, not doing your own damn accounting. You should be looking at your numbers on a daily basis. 
because you know of all people, if you don't understand where you are right now, every single day in your company, how do you expect to grow? And you say this shit to your clients, don't you? But are you doing it yourself? Don't be a hypocrite, friends. If it's so important to your client's financial health, if it's so important to your clients for them to grow, for them to see their future, for them to make a budget, if it's so great for them, why are you not doing it for yourself? Because I can tell you without a doubt, I am. I have a cash flow forecast. I know what my bank balance is every day. I can tell you right now. I can tell you every single transaction that went out of every single one of my bank accounts today and everything that went in it because I keep my finger on the pulse of my money every day because I don't just say it's important. I know it's important and I walk the walk, not just talk the talk, right? I see a weekly P&L for my company. Do you? I take the score every day of my company and my company's economics. Do you? And if it's important for your clients, then why isn't it important for you? You guys catching what I'm laying down? If you want to attract clients who think this stuff is important, make it important for yourself. If you want to attract clients who see the importance of hiring somebody to help them with their finances, maybe it's time you do the same. Because you are not too good to have help with your finances. I was a CFO. I was a controller. I was an accountant. I was an accounts payable clerk. I could do it all does not mean I should be because I'm a leader of my company. I don't have time to do it. And it makes it a lot easier to keep my finger on the pulse of it when I get that support from my team. Right? And you might be thinking at this point, wow, Alyssa, all of this is really great. Maybe I helped you see some areas where you might be lacking in your company. Maybe there's some areas where you can grade yourself on not doing so hot. (laughs) We have some areas for improvement. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted, right? We should all be improving. I'm improving, right? And a lot of these areas that I'm pointing out to you right now about scaling your company, I'm pointing them out to you because they're also areas where I was lacking, right? There were times where I wasn't doing these things too. Remember in the beginning of this call, I said, I used to talk about scaling so nonchalantly like I knew what it was. I didn't until I did. And then I was like, oh, I was missing a huge piece of the pie, right? Part of the reason I wanted to talk to you guys today is because we have a couple spaces available right now in our mastermind where we're offering our 100K guarantee. We're helping a select few people qualify for that 100K guarantee. Add 100K or more. People who have goals of adding 100K or more to their revenue in our Moneymaker Mastermind. People who already have clients who are looking to get to the next level in the next year. If you're interested 
in that space. I want to talk to you a little more. If you're not interested in that space, that's fine. You don't even have to stay on and keep listening. You're welcome to leave. No big deal. It is 2022. We're about to go into 2023. At this point, a lot of freedom in your life, right? We should know that by now, right? There's the leave button, right? Uh, basically, what that looks like is there's three parts to this. I'm going to call them the three M's. Right? Number one, we have mentorship. A um, lot of programs that are out there talk about mentorship. They say they have mentorship. But the reality is the most that you get to talk to somebody is on the sales call. And then you don't talk to anybody after that, right? We actually have unlimited mentorship in our program. We have unlimited one-on-one -on -one where you can book a call whenever you need help or access to one of our coaches. Actually, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you what this looks like a little bit while I'm doing this. So I think that might be more helpful. So if you go to, not Instagram, uh, let's go in here. Let's go right into Kajabi. I'm going to show you guys the inside, if I can get in here. So mentorship is the first part of this. So we have, uh, as I'm looking for this, we have unlimited one-on-one -on -one in that program. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, what's unlimited one-on-one -on -one mean? Basically, the idea of that, how that came about is I didn't like the idea of thinking, oh, you're only able to book a call once a month or anything like that. The whole idea of this is if you need to get access to somebody, if you need help with something, you have the ability to get help, right? Like, I don't want you to ever feel as though you don't have a resource to get help. So you also get support in our Facebook group. So that's part of the mentorship, right? Uh, I'm trying to find, figure out where the link is. Where's the link to this? Are any of my team members on here? How do I get how do I get the link? It's got to be on here. What link? The link to book a call. Oh, is it right here? Oh. Mm, oh, if you go right back here. up. Isn't this it? It's the type form. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So basically, what you do is you fill out this type form. Um, you put in your information and what you need support on. And we help you schedule a one-on-one -on -one call. So you get selected with the right coach. For example, if you have any kind of problem with technology, you would be paired with Allie because she is our tech person, right? If you need support with copywriting or writing a sales pitch um, or any kind of sales copy, that would be Johanna because Johanna is... Uh, um, a, our copywriter. She's our in-house copywriter, right? So that's the way to do that. So other areas of mentorship, we have live training class schedule. Um, we have million dollar money party that is with Lily Newhouse on every Monday. Tuesday is the executive mastermind call. Um, there is a couple different coaches that rotate. Number one is me. Obviously, I'm running that. That's a two-hour call with me. Uh, Leanne Heil is one of our coaches for that call. She does everything on sales. We also have um, Alexis uh, does sales uh, because she is our top salesperson. I believe she's sold over 750000 at this point for our company. Um, and so she does everything on sales, setting, things like that. Uh, on this call. So she just did an awesome training. I believe it was yesterday. And I have a training next week that I'll do. Wednesday, we do Facebook ads um, and traffic with Tammy and Emily. 
And then on Thursdays, we have copywriting and this is actually turning into um, marketing message. So this is really like developing your marketing message. And this is with Johanna uh, Sanchez, who helps us with all of our marketing in-house as well. Of course. Okay. So that is the first part of mentorship, right? So like mentorship, we want to make sure that you have access to people, real people, right? And you also have a Slack channel that you have access to. So you get one-on-one -on -one attention in there as well as uh, the Facebook community. The next part of this is the next M is going to be models, right? So we want to give you models. So models and frameworks, not just um, hoping for the best, right? So a lot of times, uh, a lot of times what happens that I see in programs is people hand out or dish out a tactic. Why is a tactic different from a model? Tactics are go message a hundred people every day on LinkedIn. That's a tactic. We teach models. So we want you to understand how to go catch your fish, not just hand you the fish. There are times where we want to hand you the fish, right? There are absolutely times where it's like, you need a fish right now. Here's the fish, right? And so how do we do that? We give you certain scripts. We give you certain sales scripts. We give you, um, we give you content every single month that you can go post right? So we give you content. We give you sales scripts. We give you um, messenger scripts. We give you a done for you. It's pretty much a done for you um, funnel. So you could start running ads. We give you a lot of things. And it's like, here's the fish, right? But there are certain areas where we want you to understand the model and teach you how to fish. So you can go catch your own fish. Why is that? Why is that? Because we don't want you to rely on us forever. We want you to want to work with us forever, sure. But we don't want you to rely on us. We want you to know what to do if something breaks. In a guru-centric model, what happens is the guru is the, is the top tier, right? And everybody waits for the guru to say what to do next. And if something happens with the tactic, if the tactic stops working, if the tactic breaks, everybody's like, what do I do now? That doesn't work anymore, right? I never want you to feel that way. One of the reasons I believe I've been so successful in business is because I've never had a guru. I haven't been able to find one, truthfully. Every time I find somebody that I think I like, I'm like, this person's a douchebag, right? And so- so I'm really lucky that I'd only run into douchebags, I guess. Uh, maybe I'm not. I don't know. But the reality is I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't want to do that. Right. And so I think about it from a different perspective. What I learned early on, though, is I hated teaching tactics because if people didn't want to do it, it was like, well, I don't blame you for not wanting to do it. I didn't want to do the shit some coach taught me to do either. Right. And many of you have heard my story about here, go message a hundred people on LinkedIn. And then I just got the request for feet pics, right? And so that was weird. So at the end of the day, what, what I want you guys to have is a model, is have the understanding of here's how to do these things. Here's, here's an understanding of why this works, what it is, and what you can do if you want to go do it a different way. And also understanding what's going to work best for you based on who you are. Because the reality is a lot of you are here because you see something in me that you like about me, right? You, you stayed on this call the whole time because there's some sort of characteristics that you see in yourself, right? We look for a mirror. Is that right? When you watch somebody online, we typically look for a mirror. You want to see a version of yourself. You see something in me that mirrors you. And so there's going to be a lot of stuff I teach you in mastermind that you're going to be like, I'll do that because that seems like it could fit me. But there's going to be areas where you're like, eh, no, 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 thanks. Right. But if you understand why it works, you could do something different. And we applaud that. 
you don't have to do everything I tell you to do, but you have to do something. And so we want to know how are you going to take action? How are you going to market yourself if it's not that way? right? And we're going to help you figure that out for yourself because the best strategy that's going to work for you is the one that you're going to freaking implement, friends. It's not going to be the one I tell you to do or, you know, suck it up, buttercup. It's going to be the one that you are going to do every day and take responsibility for, right? So those are models. And then finally is the mastermind. You're going to come in for the strategy. You're going to come in for that 100K guarantee. You're going to stay for the relationships. You're going to stay for the community. We have seven-figure and multi-six-figure accounting firms and coaches and community members in here who are absolutely incredible. They make my job so easy because they're constantly coaching each other and holding each other accountable, cheering each other on and sharing wins. And so even if I tell you to do something, you may not want to do it, but you're going to do it because you're going to see it working for them. It holds you accountable naturally. The mastermind, the tagging of each other saying, hey, did you see this? Did you see that this worked? When you come into a community immediately and you get support and you're immediately welcomed, the one thing I'm most proud of in this community, in Moneymaker Mastermind, it's not the course, it's not the results that we get, like we get really fucking good results, but it's not any of that. It's actually the community that I've been able to cultivate because for whatever reason, I attract some of the coolest, most successful people on the internet. And for that, it's it's absolutely incredible. And, and I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of the community that I've created. We have people like Shanita Jones, uh, Danae is in there, um, Wendy Tibbetts, Jamie Gruel. I, I should name drop more people. I can't think of more people that I should name drop. But um, is there anybody on right now that I'm missing that I should name drop? No, they're probably all on another training that they should be on in our mastermind. They're all probably on Tammy's call right now or some other call. So the reality is, is if you need a space and you're looking for a space going into 2023, where you want to make an additional 100K, 250K, the reality is the 100K guarantee is just the guarantee. We'll work with you until you do. We, we put that in paper. It is in your contract. But the reality is you can make much more than that if that's your desire. And that's our desire for you, right? We have million dollar awards. We have 500K awards. We have 100K awards. And we hand them out at our live events. And our live events are a big part of our, um, of our offer. And you'll hear more about our offer. If you're interested in, in hearing more about this, what I want you to do is I want you to get on a call with one of our client success advisors. And so uh, we can drop a link for that. Um, Allie, can you, Allie or Tiffany, can one of you drop a link for me for the uh, cash flow consultation? Thank you so much. So you can get on a call, do a cash flow consultation. Um, and I'm going to ask you to do that in order to get access to that. Uh, you're going to get access to our core curriculum. You're going to get access to our one-on-one -on -one coaching. You're going to get access to our two live events per year, completely free. Um, you're going to get access to the Slack channel. You're going to get access to me and our coaches um, and be held accountable to reaching those goals right? And we give you a plan. We give you a 90 day tracker, everything you need to do every single day, right? Every single day. This is not a guess in, come in and guess what you have to do. We're going to tell you exactly what to do um, immediately, right? And align it to your goals as well, right? If your goal is to hit 100K and it's to do it with a Facebook group, we're going to show you exactly how to do that. If your goal is to come in and hit 100K and you want to do it on Instagram, we're going to show you exactly how to do that, right? 
if you if your goal is to grow if your goal is to sell a course Danae came into our program I wish she was on here right now Danae came into our program she was really worried about like what if I can't sell my course man this girl she came out um her first I want to say her first month with us I want to say she sold over it must have been at least 28k in sales and course sales she hadn't sold one of her courses in at least a month and it's a it's on profit strategy so if you have a course you want to sell a course we're going to help you do that right this is not a cookie cutter program because i don't believe in cookie cutter people you are not created equal right all right so grab one of those calls get started with us see we can start 2023 together. Alrighty, my dears, I'm going to go as well. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Anyone have any questions about um, the mastermind uh, or any of our other products, of course, and working with us or scaling your company? I'm here for that. Um, let me know. Uh, I'll probably be live the rest of the week. I'm going to do a couple more lives the rest of the week, and I'll be talking about our offer and talking to you guys uh, about all the things. I just had a panic attack that it was 2 o'clock. Do I have anything at 2? I don't, right? I shouldn't. No? Okay. I was like, oh, my God, it's 2. Do I have a meeting? Anyone have any questions since I don't technically have a meeting yet, too? I'm going to check the Facebook group, see if there's any questions over there. Let's see. Shoot. Oh my gosh, of course I can't find it. Is there, does anyone know if there's questions? Everybody's just hanging out with me. All there's of you no who are questions. hanging out with me still. So. There's huh? no questions. There's there isn't? You guys can't see any? Okay. No. All right. Well, I guess I shall end the call. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.